So, you've designed a great app to help coffee shops grow their business. You and your co-workers spent time researching your product and have been working day and night to finish it. Suddenly, loads of people are using your app and the coffee shop is doing great business. You're getting inquiries from other coffee shops and that means only one thing. It's time for your app to scale up. But how do you do it? I'm Jason Berryman and this is Building Enterprise Scale Apps with Firebase and Google Cloud. So, a quick introduction to me. I'm a freelance certified Google Cloud architect at 418.dev and a Google Developers Expert for both Firebase and Google Cloud Platform. In this session, I'm going to show you some of the ways that I design enterprise-ready applications using the power of Firebase and Google Cloud. There are a few things to consider when building an app. Your app should be easy for people to access and sign up to. If you're handling sensitive data, you may want to add multi-factor authentication. And if your app is going to be used by different organizations, they may want to have separate user databases. Maybe one operational database doesn't suit all of your requirements. By cleverly distributing data into the most appropriate data store, we can leverage the power of each database product. As your app starts to grow, you may need to provide an API for others to integrate with. Some of your data will be required for in-app reporting. Some of it may need to be put into a separate data lake or data warehouse for later analytics. Your data needs to be secure. You may be handling personally identifiable information, or can I ask for short? And depending on where your app is published, there may be strict regulations on how you store, process, and archive this data. And finally, the health of your app is extremely important. Any downtime will reflect badly on your user's experience. Identifying issues before your users notice is key to maintaining a happy user base. There's a lot to cover here, so if you're ready, let's jump in and take a look, starting with user onboarding. Our coffee shop app has three types of user, coffee shop owners and staff, registered customers, and new customers. Each will have their own level of access, and we can make it more granular if we need. Our coffee shop owners and staff will have access to data on all of their customers, as well as financial data, so we should make that more secure than a regular customer login. Our customers may also want to sign up to multiple coffee shops, all using our app, so we need some kind of multi-tenancy in place. Here's where we introduce our first leap from Firebase into Google Cloud. Google Cloud Identity Platform, or GCIP, is a superset of Firebase authentication. It offers all the same facilities and even uses the same SDKs, but adds a couple of really great features, multi-factor authentication and multi-tenancy. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, will add an extra layer of security for our coffee shop owners and staff. When they log in from any non-trusted device, they'll be prompted to authenticate with an additional secure one-time code. In your security rules for Firestore, the real-time database, or cloud storage, you can easily check if a user has logged in with an MFA token. Our coffee shop customers can log in without requiring MFA. Asking them to do this, to just buy a cup of coffee, may put them off visiting. But there is something different that we need to do with our customers. Sarah may want to register with more than one coffee shop, but she wants to use the same authentication method for each one. And each coffee shop will want their own list of customers. This is where multi-tenancy comes in. When a user now logs into a coffee shop, their request will supply a tenant ID, which will be used to verify their account with the right coffee shop. The tenant ID is shown in the security rules here and can be included as part of the path. To upgrade to GCIP, simply go into the Google Cloud Platform console, search for Identity Platform, and click the Upgrade button. Before you do this, check the pricing to see how GCIP is charged differently to Firebase Authentication. When it comes to your choice of data store, there are many options in GCP. For most Firebase developers, Cloud Firestore the real-time database and cloud storage will be the most familiar. 
Firebase has excellent serverless NoSQL databases with some excellent features, such as the automatic synchronization to clients and security rules, which replace a conventional API. They're available to both databases and cloud storage. However, sometimes you need something a little extra. When choosing a data store, look at the options which best suits your business requirements. For example, if you're looking for search, Algolia has an excellent link to Firebase using extensions. With Algolia also comes the ability to provide pagination and counts for both searches and filters, along with facet counts. When you see online stores where you can filter and see the counts per filter, it's likely to be a search engine like Algolia that's providing this functionality. If you have functions which have to read the same documents repeatedly and quickly, something like Memory Store is a GCP managed version of Redis, which can cache data for use within your cloud functions. Make sure that you first look at the fixed cost of running a Memory Store instance versus the variable cost of fetching documents from Cloud Firestore. If you are fetching a lot of documents, Memory Store may be for you. Any Firebase developer has spent time getting to grips with NoSQL. Anyone who's watched Todd's series on getting to know Cloud Firestore, and I'll put a link to that in the description below, will see how NoSQL is great for those times when you need to write a document just a few times and read it many hundreds or even thousands of times. It's also great for scaling. NoSQL databases scale horizontally really, really easily, but they don't suit every situation. Sometimes only a relational database will do. So what are our choices? Cloud SQL is a hosted service within GCP, providing support for MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server. As with most SQL databases, it scales vertically and will be sized according to your needs. You can choose a high availability option, but you'll still need to manage your own backups for archiving and data recovery. There's some great documentation on disaster recovery for all Google Cloud managed databases. I'll link it below. Spanner is what's often referred to as a new SQL database. It combines the relational benefits of a traditional SQL database with the horizontal scaling of NoSQL. It sits firmly in Google Cloud's serverless range, and whilst backup and data recovery is relatively straightforward, it still requires an element of DevOps to implement and run in production. If you're looking for a high performance, truly scalable regional or multi-region relational database, you won't go far wrong with Spanner. And with the recently launched partial instances, it's also much cheaper to develop, test and run. So now we have data in our respective storage locations. How do we get it out? Well, there are a few options, and these vary depending on the storage choices. Algolia has client-side SDKs, like Firebase, and they can be secured with a JSON web token to allow control over the visibility of your search results. Again, they will be different depending on whether the user is a member of staff, a registered customer, or a member of the public. I'll cover these in more detail in another video but here's an overview of the registration flow. Memory Store is probably best used only within Cloud Functions. There's very little to be gained by accessing it from the front end with a callable function. For access to our relational database options, callable functions work really well here. You can use them directly or via a service like API Gateway, which we'll cover later. Whichever storage option you choose will have its own set of benefits and challenges. Remember, try and pick the one that best suits your application, but also consider functional requirements, as well as complexity and cost. Your application may need to allow access to other applications. In a simple form, the Firebase database tools have various SDKs and REST APIs. But if you need something a little more complex, you may want to consider building your own API. Google Cloud Platform has a few options here, 
which all support the Open API specification. Cloud endpoints using Cloud Run with ESP v2, API Gateway, and Apogee. The easiest way to get started is with API Gateway, which is a fully managed service within Google Cloud Platform. You can design your own API specification and documentation with a tool like Swagger Hub. Then export the YAML to use an API gateway. Swagger Hub can even export a Node.js Express template, which you can use to help you get started when creating your cloud function endpoints. When you create your own endpoints, you will lose the authorization layer that you get with 5A security rules. So the first thing to do when you receive a request is to verify the authentication token with the admin SDK and then check the authorization rules which you will need to create within your own code. Callable functions handle the authentication token automatically, but they only support post methods. So if you're looking to implement get, put, patch and delete, you'll have to use a standard HTTPS function. When it comes to complex reporting, BigQuery is one of the industry leading products. Firebase has an extension which will copy your Firebase document to BigQuery whenever there is a write. This is great for ad hoc analytics, but if we want to use BigQuery as the source for our regular in-app reporting, there are a few things that we can do to improve both performance and cost. The amount of data that BigQuery has to scan to return the result of a query affects how much it costs to run that query. The Firebase extension writes the whole document as a single JSON string into one field. This makes it extremely flexible when you're changing the schema regularly. But from a cost and performance point of view, we can do a little better. <coughs> Setting a BigQuery partition, usually with a date value, and having cluster fields will allow you to dramatically reduce the amount of data that your query looks at. For example, if you want to run a report for the last seven days, there's no point querying data from several months or even years in the past. If your query only looks at a few fields, there's no point in querying every column or all of the values in the built-in JSON string. So having your function write individual Firestore document fields to BigQuery fields will really help here. If you have a multi-tenant app, you might consider putting each client's data into their own data set. This allows not just an extra layer of separation for security and compliance, but it also allows you to give your client direct read-only access to their data for use in a tool such as Data Studio. We can further separate your BigQuery analytics data from your main application project by storing the data in different projects. This is where Cloud PubSub comes into play. We can send a document writing Cloud PubSub and have subscribers in different projects receiving them and updating BigQuery local to these projects. Finally, you can also provide complex transformations and windowing to your data using a tool like Dataflow. How you use BigQuery, Cloud PubSub and Dataflow will vary depending on your application. You can architect them in any way you like to produce different results for your app to suit your client needs. To return the data to your users, you can write a callable function, an API endpoint, or use Data Studio. Great, so we have our app allowing users to log in. We're using the right data sources. Our external partners have an API and our reporting and analytics are all sorted. So let's see it in action. Wait, hold on. We can't use this. These documents contain personally identifiable information. We could end up in a whole heap of trouble. So what can we do? Well, we know that the name field and the email field will both contain PII, so we can leave those out. But what about the notes field? We may want some of this information, but we have no way of knowing whether or not it contains sensitive information. Fortunately, the Data Loss Prevention API comes to the rescue. DLP can identify and even redact sensitive information. Now, we can safely store our notes field 
with no fear of having this information present. DLP can even redact information from images. If we still need to store this information in BigQuery, we can use column level security so that we can still store this sensitive data, but only allow access to it from an authorized user. Or if we do need to check for patterns, we can hash the data choosing methods which are irreversible or methods where we can derive the data using a secure key. Finally, we may have reasons why we can't, shouldn't, or don't want to keep this data for a long time. Both BigQuery and Google Cloud Storage have lifecycle management. We can reduce the costs of our file storage by moving it to a cheaper storage class after a set number of days. And we can configure GCS and BigQuery to delete the data when the file object or BigQuery partition reaches a specified age. Now our app is up and running, our data is secure, and our coffee shops have the analytics data they want, we need to keep our customers happy. There's nothing worse than an unreliable application. Using serverless tools from Firebase and Google Cloud Platform, we can already rest in the knowledge that the Google data center teams will be working hard to ensure that our app has the maximum uptime and performance. But sometimes issues that we don't foresee can happen. This is where monitoring is essential. Cloud monitoring allows you to create dashboards which will show you the performance of your application, including custom metrics. It will also allow you to be alerted of any incidents or problems when they arise. Connecting them to an external service like PagerDuty or Zendesk will keep your engineers on top of issues as they arise. All this talk of coffee is making me thirsty. Looks like it's time to use our app. So we've looked at just a few of the ways that you can extend Firebase with Google Cloud Platform to bring real scale to your Firebase applications. I'll cover some of these topics in greater detail in future videos on my own YouTube channel, linked below. Until next time, happy coding! Thank you.